So you want to learn film, huh? That's what we're going to teach how to do. To film. It's called film. The anti-suck. Fear not the film. Film. It's kind of vintage. But not old, gross, and smelly. Pixar Academy. Come be cool. Film. Learn it. Love it. Thus saith the Parker. Name one of the top ten wedding photographers in the world. A legend behind the lens. World-renowned author. The one. The only. Kevin Cup. We've got clients coming. Can you please go out and sweep the front of the office? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right, thank you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to PhotoPro. I'm Kevin, and we're going to go today back into Photoshop and we're going to take an image, a typical nice portrait image of two young little ladies and take the image from start to finish. So from a little bit of retouching to enhancing the images, putting some texture, a border on it, maybe a vintage style or two, we'll see what we want to do. But we're going to take the image all the way through the process in Photoshop and just share with you what, what I typically would do with an image. So I'll see you in a minute on PhotoPro. Well, here we are, we're ready to start working on this cute little image of these girls. And this is a portrait session that we did down at a, um, a boutique gift shop. And sometimes we like to do portraits in places that are typical of what my client or what the subject would do. And I think it's fun to make portraits that have some of their personality in it some way. You know, we could always just go to the park and do a family portrait of people sitting in the park. But I think it's fun when you can find a way to incorporate something of their personality. So these little girls are young little fashionistas. They love to go shopping. They love gift shops. They love stores and all the stuff that I, I'm assuming they get from their mom. But uh, so we found a store that was uh, really cute. Went downtown and set up this little session there. We got some shopping bags and dressed them all up. And the store owners were great. And one of the things I talk about in my, my lighting notebook where we done many of these shoots here is you can get access to all kinds of places to do a shoot if you just ask. A lot of times we just don't think to ask and when you go to especially to a store or a small shop uh, if it's not a major chain store and tell them hey we're gonna do some cool photos in here and you're welcome to use them put them on your wall and your brochures or advertising make it make it uh, a good deal for them to let you in there we've almost never had anybody uh, reject us. So it's, it's pretty cool. You just let them know what you're going to do and that you're there to help them or offer them something too. And as long as they're not crazy busy at the time you're trying to shoot, it works out pretty well. So we went down, did these portraits. Here's these two little girls. Here's one of the images we did of them. Uh, another one that we did was them play shopping and exploring and finding goodies in the store. And, and just I just caught their reactions. I basically gave them a spot to, to stand and set up my lighting. Now this... Uh, the lighting setup for this particular shot was very similar to a lighting setup I shared with you on our lighting segment earlier in Photo Pro with the big light panels. Basically, I set up a light panel just to the left of the girls here with a speed light shining through it. And in the background, I had another light that was kind of bouncing into the ceiling. It was just a direct light, but it was also skimming across the store, which gives them that really beautiful little hair light, separation light, that makes them kind of jump out from the background and, and gives that nice separation there. So the lighting was not too complicated, and I just gave the girls a very basic area to stand and do what they wanted to do, and then we just let them play, gave them stuff to look at. We started pulling things off the shelves and handing them to them, and they had so much fun. So it really pretty much shot itself other than me, <laughs> me pulling the trigger. Uh, don't tell anybody I did that. Okay, so we have this cute shot here, and let's go back to the other one because we're gonna do a little portrait uh, work on this one first. And they don't need much. Mo generally with kids, obviously, you're not gonna need to do a whole lot because their skin is generally clean. If you're working with teenagers, obviously, you have uh, pimples and things to deal with. 
With little kids, probably the only thing you're gonna have to deal with most of the time is whether they've got some like boogers coming out of their nose or or maybe they just had a little crying fit and their eyes are a little puffy, you know, which means they're gonna have some little shadows under their eyes that you might wanna just minimize because their eyes are still puffy or something. Um, or maybe just because of your lighting and uh, the direction they're facing, they have a little more shadows under the eyes. And that's a very typical thing to retouch is shadows, whether it's kids uh, or adults. Uh, we, almost always want to minimize the shadows a little bit just to make people look a little fresher uh, than they may actually be at that time. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer right here on your layers palette. Okay, and then I'm going to take my healing brush. Shortcut is J. Healing brush is right here on your tool palette. I want to make sure that it says sample all layers at the top, all right? Then I'm going to go down here next to this shadow line on her eye, make my brush size just about the size of the shadow that I want to work on. I'm going to option click with my brush. Now when I'm placing my brush to heal, I'm going to plan for the path I'm going to take. In other words, I'm going to go here, drag along that shadow, right? So I want to plan my suck up point, the part where it's actually going to take the texture and tone from, just below it. So if I option or alt click on the PC there and then move my mouse here to the shadow and drag, you'll notice how it now parallels where I'm dragging with good skin. All right. So you kind of have to plan your path before you start dragging. And I'll do the same on this eye here. I know I'm going to drag this way or this way, either direction. So I'll option click here. Then I'll place my mouse here and drag along the line. Okay, if you need to get a little bit extra that you missed, just go over it one more time or two until you have it disappeared. That's a word I made up. Now we're going to do the same on this other little lady here. We'll option click there, go up to the shadow and drag. Let it heal. Go to this line, option click there, drag along the shadow. Okay. Once it's gone, you can go to the layer that you just healed on and change the opacity so that it blends with the original. I always like to restore some of their character lines. I don't want to take away all of their character, but restore some of that so that it looks like a natural blend. So if you take your opacity slider here, it turns into a little finger. So as soon as Photoshop gives you the finger, you can click and hold and drag to the left. And as you do that, you'll notice that the lines start to come back. And you just find the point where you feel it feels natural, where you see a little bit of the character lines, but not as much as the original. Usually between 50 and 80% works really, really well. Here's our before and our after. See, much better, still looks very, very natural. You can never tell. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to do a little brightening of their eyes, put a little light in their eyes, and I'm going to use my dashboard for that. Now, if some of you are familiar with our dashboard tools for Photoshop, and this is basically a floating palette that controls all of our Photoshop effects. It also will control your actions if you get Dashboard Pro. Any actions that you have in your actions palette are now available to search and launch via the dashboard. So there is a a category in here for user actions and everything that's in your actions palette just automatically appears but the cool thing is that you can now search and launch them instantly so if I want digital fill flash I just type dig which is the beginning of digital fill flash and hit enter on my keyboard and there it launches this action now this action I already know what to do so I don't need to show the messages that tell me what to do or how to use it but uh, typically there are messages that tell you how to use this particular tool. Why are you scrolling away from me? So I'm going to set my brush size just about the size of the, um, the pupil. And then I'm going to just paint a little bit of light. So notice here I'm just brightening up the eyes. It adds a little more of a twinkle. It enhances the highlights that are already in the eye. And it also brings out the color of the eye a little bit, making it a little bit brighter and fresher looking. Okay. So just a couple of quick clicks across their eyes is all you need to do. And that brings it out, opens it up a little bit. Uh, this works really well too. Sometimes if there's kind of just dark shadows around the whole socket, you can size your brush larger like this and give one little dab just to the eye socket. 
okay, to open it up a little bit. And it's a very subtle change, but it really helps to freshen up their look in the photo. Once I've done that, and the retouching, and the brightening of the eyes is good, the next thing I wanna do is to think about enhancing it. And I'm gonna go for a vintage look. So the cool thing about the dashboard is it's all keyworded, so I can type in vintage, and any of the actions that are keyworded with vintage will now show up. So I've got several options to choose from in the vintage category. And I can try them one at a time. Maybe tea stain would be a nice one. So I'll just select it and double click. It's going to run tea stain on there. And as soon as it's done, ooh, cute. Nice little vintage look there. I can do undo to see the before and then redo to see the after. I like it. Nice little vintage look. Very cool. Now, hmm. I may want to open up the shadows a little bit. It looks like the shadows got a little dark with that. There's a lot more contrast than there was before. So I'm gonna type the word shadow into my dashboard because all my tools are keyworded with relevant terms uh, that, that think like I think. In other words, um, shadow, I'm gonna not only pull up actions and tools that have shadow in the name, but anything I've keyworded meaning that they work on the shadows or work great with shadows, that sort of thing. Okay, so here's one right here that I know would work nice, the KK Shadow Detail Opener, and all I need to do is double click on it. And there you go. So the Shadow Detail Opener opened up the shadows a bit for us. There's the before, and there's the after. Now I've got nice detail still everywhere. I've got this beautiful tea stained effect and maybe I'm gonna try a texture. So I'm gonna collapse that dashboard and open up the textures dashboard. And I'm gonna browse through my earth textures. Now the textures dashboard will automatically overlay a texture. It comes with a bunch of textures. And you can preview them by just clicking through them here on the dashboard for textures. And I'll select one and just hit apply. Now it's gonna take the texture, automatically match it to the, the size, the orientation of the image and everything, the resolution, and give you an option to scale it if you want to. There's a little message that says scale it if you want. If you don't wanna scale it, just go ahead and hit enter. And as soon as it's done applying itself to the image, it's also gonna set up a layer mask automatically with the right uh, tools so that you can paint away texture. Here's the message that tells you that, paint away texture from places like the skin where you may not want it to make them look like they have a leprosy. Unless that's something that you specialize in. So now I just paint real quick right over her face. Do, 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 do. Right over her face. We're taking away the texture. Okay, so their faces are still nice and smooth. Make sure it's all gone. And I'll take it away from their hands too. And notice now I'm not having to do any crazy masking or anything. I just paint because it'll blend really smoothly with the original image. Okay. After I've done that, I may look at the image and say, is there any additional uh, adjustments I want to make? Maybe a little more digital fill flash. So I'll type in dig one more time for digital and hit enter to launch the selected action. And I'll take this tool now and I'm going to paint just a little bit onto her face because it got a little bit contrasty. Okay, so right there, open up the shadows on her face. And she's looking gorgeous. Okay, last things last, I'm going to now take my texture dashboard and we're going to choose a sloppy border. And just like with the textures, you can scroll through them look at the different borders to apply, and let's try this one called Cherry Bomb, hit enter. I don't need to do anything, the border will automatically fit to the image. I have the choice of expanding the canvas to give me more space without cropping any of the image, or there's an option to actually shrink the image within the canvas that it's already on, and put the border on it that way. But I chose to grow the border. And Viola, there you go. There's your finished image with the border, the nice texture applied around the edge, edges, the vintage styling here, and two incredibly cute young ladies. 
you're all done, you can save your image and move on to the next. Don't forget to tune in next week when we're going to find out a simple way for you to make sure you get the perfect client via an exercise I developed for my boot camp attendees. See how it's changed their lives and how it could possibly change yours. Photo Pro was brought to you by White House Custom Color. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.